Hello, you're watching Popular Cruising and our review of the Crystal Symphony, the luxury line Crystal Cruises. She may be looking a little tired and worn around the edges, but she's still one of the classiest vessels afloat with some of the best service as well. In fact, the Symphony's accommodations are part of what we enjoy so much about Crystal Cruises that you can buy in less expensively with a deluxe stateroom with window and still get great luxury level service throughout without the need to book a suite. But of course those are also available as you'll soon discover. In the meantime, entry level staterooms like these are still comfortable, even if a little cozier. As you can see, these bathrooms have made good use of an otherwise smaller area. Similar in size and configuration, although with the balcony, are deluxe staterooms with veranda. With the same plush beds and convenient desk and living area. And of course, the aforementioned balcony. And really, the only complaint to be had with the bathrooms is the smaller shower space. For more room, the next step up is a penthouse with veranda like we enjoyed. Again with a plush bed area, an even larger balcony, and a lovely living and dining space. There is, however, a slight decor clash between the old golden cabinet tones and the more modern neutral furnishings. Still, there's nothing to sneeze at about a convenient walk-in closet. Or a contemporarily remodeled bathroom. Complete with a nice jetted jacuzzi bathtub. Fine etro toiletries. Always welcome his and her sinks. And a separate shower that could stand to be a little larger. Certainly the biggest accommodations on board are the crystal penthouses with veranda. With an expansive and handsome living area. Complete dining table and lookout. and a deeper balcony. The master bedroom is also quite splendid. And the suite overall has been better redesigned than the rest of the accommodations. Also particularly nice are his and hers walk-in closets. And the master bathroom is also as nice as you would expect with lovely floor tile and wall marble, a delightfully ample sized shower, complete with a premium rain shower head, and a television and an outside view to enjoy while you bathe. Elsewhere on board, the luxuries continue at the Crystal Spawn Salon. Where you'll find a number of treatment chairs before heading to the dressing rooms to prepare for a massage or to enjoy the steam room or dry sauna. There are also a number of treatment rooms that can be reserved. and the relaxation room leads to some of the outdoor fitness equipment. Or there's always the indoor fitness center to utilize as well. Another outdoor area to burn some calories is the Wimbledon Court. Or you can head over to the historic building plaque and practice your golfing at the driving nets.
but of course you may just opt to relax at the forward observation deck. With all its premium teak decking, the Seahorse Pool remains one of the best outdoor decks on a cruise ship. And its signature statue and tiled recliners are also fun additional elements. And you can never go wrong with a whirlpool that's this big. And just in front is still one of the best examples of a fantastic observation lounge at sea. With its great skylights and full wraparound windows. Also showcased here are more of the line's latest design motifs. Which casts a light on other venues is very dated. But meanwhile, this is one of our favorites. From back when I was a child on board, I definitely remember the Fantasia and Waves kids and teens facilities. Although since then they've removed the ball pit, as well as the old school video arcade games in favor of new ones. Heading downstairs there's always great views and opportunities for a stroll at the aft outdoor fitness decks as well as promenade deck. that up here to show just how wonderfully expansive it all is. I mean you can never beat sea day views like these. And just inside is the ship's timelessly beautiful Crystal Plaza. With its great cascading waterfall and signature sculpture. Plus concierge, reception, and shore excursions desks. As well as a portrait of the ship's godmother, Angela Lansbury. just upstairs from which are the Avenue of the Stars retail stores. For a wide variety of fine goods. But a surprisingly small amount of logo items. For other purchases and portraits, there's the nearby photo shop. For complimentary book and movie rentals, there's an expansive library. And to try your luck at video or table games, there's the Crystal Casino. Which as you can tell from the decor, used to be Caesar's Palace at sea. But with Crystal Cruises now owned by Genting Hong Kong, it's now Resorts World at sea. Meanwhile, for a cigar lounge, the Connoisseur Club is a wonderfully themed space. And if it didn't smell so bad, I would be keen to enjoy more. Just outside are great photos of the ship being built, as well as more of Godmother Lansbury. And just next door is the Computer University at Sea in the studio which we're thrilled to see filled exclusively with Apple computers. And rounding out the activities on board is the popular Bridge Lounge. When it becomes time for dining, 
The Avenue Saloon is a great place for a drink before or after dinner. And a richly decorated space, not unlike the nearby Connoisseur Club. Of course, the main restaurant on board is the Crystal Dining Room. A classic dining room with mostly traditional seating times. Or at least there is also dining by reservation. Where you can enjoy modern or classic dishes like delicious broiled fresh main lobster, savory seafood enchiladas, a tasty beef trio, and a sweet souffle Grand Marnier. Another great place for drinks throughout the day, as well as live music, is the Crystal Cove, just off from the Crystal Plaza. And just above, the Bistro is a great place to grab a specialty coffee. Or all sorts of great snacks. It's one of Crystal Cruise's original venues that still delights guests to this day. And I could definitely go for one of these treats right now. Among the specialty restaurants where the first visit is free is the Italian Prego. A lightly themed space where the food comes first and foremost. with classic courses like expertly prepared beef carpaccio. Fresh caprese salad. Wonderful veal scallopini. Perfect pesto pasta. And a sweet send-off of pomegranate semifreddo. Adjacent to Prego is the second specialty restaurant, Silk Road and the Sushi Bar from acclaimed chef Nobu. Here all sushi is always freshly prepared. And the seating has a much more modern style. Where dishes are served like yummy sushi rolls themselves. Excellent lobster spring rolls. Creative Nobu style tacos. Grilled Australian Wagyu Beef Ribeye from Greg Norman's Signature Ranch, Queensland. And an always refreshing trio of creme brulees. Meanwhile, for even more special dinners paired with fine wine, there's the Vintage Room. And also back on deck is the Trident area where the removal of the former Magridome-covered pool has made for far more alfresco dining space for the likes of the Trident Bar and Grill and its underwhelming pizzas but fantastic breakfasts always served with a friendly smile and you can never go wrong at the Trident Ice Cream Bar with complimentary Ben & Jerry scoops. And of course, you can always get a drink to enjoy. Along the stunning living wall. Just inside from which is the nicely remodeled Lido Café Buffet. It's many stations of tasty food for breakfast and lunch. And occasional full-service casual dinners. Preparing the likes of shrimp cocktail. Classic Caesar salad. 
and a savory steak with all the fixins. Of course, there's also great entertainment to be had on the Crystal Symphony as well. Starting with the dedicated Hollywood Theater Cinema. Screening some of the latest films and some classics as well. Or an occasional screensaver, as it were. The Starlight Club Cafe is easily the most dated venue on board. But with another major refurbishment plan, we can only hope that it receives the modern update that it deserves. In the meantime, the ship's great singers and dancers are occasionally showcased here. Elsewhere, back at the Avenue Saloon, Magic Castle at Sea is featured, with ace performances by the likes of stand-up magician Derek Hughes. There's only there's only 60 pages in One Fish, Two Fish, right? That's he's thinking he's thinking, oh, that's easy. Derek used the mnemonic peg system and memorized the first 60 pages of a Russian novel. <laughs> I didn't. Uh, it's possible, but I did not do that. Uh, listen, this man, he came in a little late. We didn't prearrange anything. He has the complete works of William Shakespeare. No one's going to tell him what page to turn to. Have you marked the page? I see you yes. have a finger, finger mark. Do you want to go with that page? Yeah. Let's okay, look at the first word on that page, okay? And read it to yourself and look at me. Have you kept the page marked? I have. Yeah, keep that page. We may use more on that page. Okay. Uh, are you an artist? I Video production, yeah. See, I'm getting your visual based, not so much well. word yeah. based. I'm getting a visual image. Does this make sense? Yes, it does. What is the word? Hearts. Hearts, oh, okay. Hold on, open the book. We'll go to the first word oh, on the next God. page. We'll go deeper. First word on the next page. Right there, just right there, yeah. And uh, shut the book and look at me. <laughs> Now I see wings and, and I see fantasy. Does that make sense? I'm seeing, uh, I'm seeing, yep. what is the word? Fairy. I got fairies, pretty Whoa. darn close. Give them a big round of applause. Otherwise, main production shows are housed in the Galaxy Lounge. A welcome old school theater in the round. Highlighting excellent Elton John tribute acts. An awesome speakeasy themed overlay. equally great performances. At best, the times they try to go modern. At least 1980s modern, that is. When at least the dancing is still superb. But the absolute best show is the one in partnership with iLuminate. Just check out how cool this is.
Thanks for watching. Please feel free to subscribe to our channel, watch our other videos, and visit popularcruising.com.